So Satoshi did not want somebody spamming the network. So he put a one megabyte limit in and said, hey, maybe we raise this later, you know, and it, it sort of fell by the wayside. Okay, so we have this one megabyte limit. Satoshi Nakamoto disappears. The network keeps growing, and a debate breaks out a number of years later as to should we increase the block size, meaning how many transactions can fit in a single block, and should that amount be larger than one megabyte. So it turns into, over the course of a couple of years, primarily between 2015 and 2017, although it technically started maybe bubbling up a little before that, a massive, massive epic battle over the future of Bitcoin. And because the, the arguments were, it turned into two camps, the big blockers and the small blockers. The big blockers said Bitcoin needs to be able to be used for payments like Visa or MasterCard. And in order to do that, we need really big blocks that can handle huge amounts of transaction volume. The small blockers, who ultimately won the war, <laughs> the uh, small blockers said no. The value of Bitcoin is in its decentralization and security and the ability for every single human to validate the entire blockchain themselves. And if we allow large blocks, that's going to mean it's super low transaction fees and there will not be an incentive for the miners to mine the blocks as the halvings happen every four years. Eventually, those go down to zero. And if you allow really large blocks, there's not an incentive for miners to mine. So. We need to limit the blocks. And then the debate, of course, was how big they should be limited. Ultimately, a hybrid solution was come up with that allowed the blocks to go up to a few megabytes, but it was still the sort of the core data was limited at one megabyte and additional data could be included in creative ways. So ultimately, this massive battle played out, the big blockers versus the small blockers. And there was, of course, you know, accusations of censorship and, you know, all of the sort of typical accusations you would normally get in a pitched battle over the ideology of something. But it ultimately came down to the big blockers who wanted Bitcoin to scale for use as payments and the small blockers who wanted security and decentralization to be central and then build on top of that for payments. So their, their logic was, hey, we can always build payment networks. We humans have built payment networks for, you know, for hundreds of years and electronically for decades. And there's no reason to potentially screw up Bitcoin by trying to make it a payment network when in reality it can never really be a payment network due to the scale of what would be required to do unless you end up with blocks so big that only a few companies can run them. And so the concern by the small blockers were if the blocks are big enough to handle huge numbers of transaction like a payment networks like, like Visa's, then the blocks will be so large that only a few companies will be able to run them. And then at that point, how is it more decentralized than the Federal Reserve? Because right now, a very small number of entities control how much money there is.